Happy 18th birthday. I wanted to start this off by saying thank you to all these new subscribers and all these views I've gotten in the last mainly two days but in the last week I had 200 and some subscribers I'm now getting close to 500 it, it doubled I don't know how that happened I did talk to a couple new subscribers to see how they found me and they said YouTube recommended my video which they've never done before I don't think not to my knowledge and uh, I went from like a thousand views in the last thir uh, I think month to 20 over 20,000 views in two days or at least in a week I don't know how many were in there was a lot in the last two days so thank you all for joining just so you know that my channel is FTRV Denny it's full-time RV life but it's not just that I mean I do everything on here that uh, uh, I show my travels uh, repairs I make on the RV sometimes you'll see the little Dickens coming out here I'm rubbing my feet hey buddy uh, I show tips and tricks on things and uh, that I learn with the RV and with my vehicle that I'm going to be towing behind uh, I'm a electrician by trade since well the last 14 or 15 years and I've since switched to locksmithing two years ago I'm doing kind of both right now uh, with health issues I'm sticking closer more to locksmithing so on the road with me I have a laser cut machine to cut uh, laser cut keys for cars I have three or four programmers I have a regular machine to cut house keys and that and I have a stock of much more than 10,000 keys and fobs and stuff inside the RV I'm hoping to use that on the road to make some some money I it was originally my plan to leave here last year and make money on a road locksmithing but uh, I didn't realize that I, I know around here we're, we're the only locksmiths there's two of us here you know in the same shop there's not another locksmith for uh, a minimum of an hour, hour and a half away. And I kind of thought that's how it was all over the country. But as I'm researching the places that I'm going, I'm starting to notice that there are areas like down south and out west that have many locksmiths. Many. I thought it was a dying breed. It is here. Uh, I'm not going to do it here, though. So basically, I just want to thank everybody for subscribing. I'll try to keep things uh, mixed up like they've been. I do add sometimes weather and news into here if I find something that I find important. Like, what the hell? That's pretty much the first time I think I put news in there. I saw the judge on his last video there saying, basically saying to Jeremy, oh, you're laughing at me. I, how am I supposed to know? I just found out 14 seconds ago when it's clear as day that that judge has been watching the videos. He knows. He's been watching his, DUI guys, Megan Fox, all those channels that have been covering him. I know he's been watching them. Everybody knows. He, and then the judge turns around and laughs at him. Meanwhile, Jeremy didn't laugh at him. All he did was point at himself. And then the judge goes ahead and laughs at him because it's okay. Because he's, he's untouchable. It, uh, some stories like that hit a spot with me and I'll, I like to talk about them. Other than that, I don't get political. I'll share the weather. If I see an accident or something going on, I'll let you guys know that, hey, Route 3, or Interstate 376, there's a wreck block on the road. So if anybody, I'm used to people being on my channel that are from around here but I'm noticing now they got multiple different countries uh, so that might not help them so much 
I'm going to do uh, I do some driving around basically just showing the area where I'm going uh, I also like to show when people get locked out of their house I do like to record those videos because when you see me get into somebody's house in less than five seconds that's the people that went to Home Depot and said let's get this lock because it's only eight bucks or ten bucks well that's why I got into it so quick when you go to the the store and get a fifty dollar lock I'm, I'm gonna struggle a little more you know the better the, the lock is the harder it is to get into I'll get into it though I'll get into pretty much any lock legally with you know the owner's consent of course so anyway I'm going to show you the furnace that I'm working on today and figure out what's going on with that and I'll see you in a little bit. I can't believe my daughter's an adult. I have no more kids. It seems like yesterday she was in the fourth grade recorder concert. <sighs> well today I want to work on something in the RV here. See if I can figure out this furnace. I've been working on it for a year now. I'm going to start my testing right here as a thermostat. I have to take this off and get the wires and I hook my meter onto it and see if I'm getting any power here. I was getting a reading at 12 volts. Now I'm going to touch them together. See if this thing turns on. It usually takes a minute. And I'm not really sure how to get to that or how to light it. I took the screws off from the outside. It doesn't seem like a, any kind of access to anything. That's not kicking on. Don't mind the masses. But I know I just washed it, but it's got stuff running all down the side. That's got to be the furnace cover. The furnace is right behind it. Well, it got too dark out. I did figure out how to get access to the internals of that furnace. And I don't think it needs lit because the fan isn't working. If the fan isn't working, then it's not getting power at all. Because if it was out of propane or the propane wasn't lit, it would still it would still run the fan. So it's probably gonna have to be a job for tomorrow when it's daylight again. Basically, I'm just taking things apart and testing wires. The reason I'm doing it out here is because I tested the fuse. The fuse inside is good. Uh, I, I crossed the thermostat wires to, to bypass the thermostat and it still didn't start. So, the problem must be out here. And I see a lot of stuff built up in here. i got to get out of here try to clean this all up so I'm gonna work on this for a little while it's gonna take a while to clean wish I still have my shot vac so that's the ignition system I only took that out just to clean it I will be putting this back in now well, it came out a lot easier than it's going in I think I'm doing something wrong Oh, it goes like this. No. How the heck did that go in there? I went like this. Like this. Okay. Gotta make sure there's no dauber nests or anything in there. That'll block any of the flow of. Oh, there is a hornet nest I already see in there. I'll be getting 
that right out. They love the smell of propane. Uh, bugs, bees, wasps, hornets. It excites them like uh, like a man might get excited over a woman type of excitement. That's just a little nest there. I may have to pull this out. It's only 12 screws. But I'm not quite sure what, if I have to disconnect the plumbing and the vents or what. And the access to get to this, it's not easy. Right here is my kitchen sink. Right, right above here. And then to the right, is the wheel well inside under my oven and I have like this much room to get into here to get over to here and I'm not a little guy next thing I want to do is check in here and see if I can see anything blocking that up it looks clear Now I'm going to start testing the wires. So I'll throw my, fern, my thermostat on to the highest setting and on so I can get the blower to come on. Then I'll throw this on the direct current. I'm going to check both sides of this relay here. I think this might be where the issue is. I don't have 12 volts at all. Okay, I can't get it out of alternating current, so I'm gonna have to try a different meter. I never understood these cheap meters. All right, I gotta try this with the fluke. It's a much trustier meter. So leaving the relay and going toward actually leaving the switch here and going to that relay I have I have power going there 13.23 volts DC That switch is good That's actually what they're calling a circuit breaker not what I expected to see this is the relay which is next in line it leaves this relay then it comes down into this motor I'm thinking this relay might be bad so I'm going to take this apart I can see some rust right there I'm first going to try and clean it up then I'm going to jumper these two wires. See if I can get that to work. You can see right here, I put this jumper in and bypass that relay. Now it's, it's running heat. However, it's not the way you want to run it, so I need to get a new relay. And that was my only problem with this furnace that I haven't used in two years because it didn't work. Goes to show you got the you got a meter, you can pretty much fix anything electrical. You can figure out what's wrong. So I'm gonna take that off. See if I can find a part number for that. Order one up. Get it here this week. And it's in the mid-60s today. Majority of the week's gonna be 
mid 60s to mid 70s and we have like two days in the 40s so I'll have plenty of time to work on this and it looks fairly simple to get out it's looking like just two Phillips heads and it's definitely been replaced before because these aren't the original screws I can't really see that I'm going to have to take this yellow off should to honestly maybe I will try and clean up first and do this just get some of that rust off That's not going to work because I already touched both. It's not the right screwdriver for the job. This one here should work better because it, you know, it's not as thick like this is. And they don't give you a whole bunch of room to work here. I need a thinner screwdriver yet. So I ended up using this little tiny jeweler's one, which worked. The tip's a bit small. It didn't strip at all. It turned it just fine. I got the relay out. I'm going to put these wires back on because I don't want to forget where they go. There's not a part number on this thing anywhere. Oh, there we go. I found it. This one went to the top. This one goes here. I'll have to look that up to see what it crosses over to. you got to remember, this thing's 35 years old, so this is probably not the same really I'm going to find it at the store or online. Probably have to find it or something, something that's compatible with it. amperage wise and all that I guess as long as it's 12 volt it should be fine to see 3120 I'll look this up now so basically that was the first time I ever diagnosed an RV furnace as an electrician by trade I do know that I do know to check at the thermostat first check for power your main power then I always go to the thermostat and check to see if I got power coming in and power going out when the temperature's up all the way. I did have that. So I did test the fuse even though I had power just to get out of the way. You know, if you put your, you can uh, put your meter on ohms and ring it out on one, one lead on each side of that fuse. If it beeps, then this is also the fuse not connected to anything. You don't want power to it when you're doing this. The fuse laying on a table and you test each end. You hold it together. That means it's a continuous circuit. There's no breaks in that circuit. That's how you test the fuse. Uh, I didn't record everything. There wasn't very much more. It's just that I do some things when I'm troubleshooting electric that uh, are frowned upon. Uh, because it's not safe for people that don't know exactly what they're doing. And I don't want to show you the wrong way, you know, the bad way of doing things. But as you saw, I came down. First thing I did was check the breaker. I had power coming in, power going out. Breaker's good. There is a wiring diagram. On If it's on here, it should be on every RV, I'm sure. Uh, the wiring diagram told me that 
the power comes in, goes into that breaker in there, and uh, it leaves that breaker and goes to a relay, leaves that relay and goes to the motor. So I went there first, I had power coming in and out. You saw I jumpered that, the two hot wires at the uh, relay, bypassing the relay, and it worked. And the reason you can't leave it hooked up like that is because the blower will never turn off. It'll just stay running constantly, which is, uh, it could do damage, and you don't want that. The motor sounds healthy, I don't want to damage the motor, and I don't want cold air blowing out whenever it hits temperature. You're going to have cold air no matter what because it has to release the rest of the heat. But I don't want to run it all night long blowing cold air and asking for propane more and more and more and just using all my propane up. So the right way to do it is just to get the relay, which I'm going to search for. Camping World has it in stock, but I don't feel like spending 10 or $15 in gas to go to Camping World to pick up a $10 relay that they want $25 for when I can just probably go on to Amazon and get an Atwood for 10 bucks and have it delivered here tomorrow. I don't need heat tonight. I won't need it until those two 40 degree days. I think they're Wednesday and Thursday, I'm pretty sure. So, basic RV troubleshooting. The first thing I showed you I have pulled out, that, that controls the ignition. So, you know, if, if you're getting air coming out but no heat, your problem could be there. Your problem could be many places then. There's a lot of videos on that. I just needed to get some kind of sign that there was life in my uh, my furnace, and now I have it. And I will record myself tra changing it out. I don't really need to. It's two screws, uh, four wires. I'm just pretty simple, but I'll record it just in case. Okay, so forget the ten dollar relay that's supposed to be here tomorrow uh, I, I decided because I'm not that experienced with RV, older RV parts yet I'm learning uh, I was recommended to me by two people that I talked to to get the dinosaur model the dinosaur company's relay which is direct replacement it's $60 instead of 10 it'll be here tomorrow but if I want something that's going to last, that's the one to get. He said, you, you can get those $10 ones and replace them every month. And they're 60 bucks for the winter, you know, of going through relays. And they won't take them back because they're electronics. So I did order the Dinosaur. I think it's a 90849, I believe. Uh, direct replacement for that time delay relay. And it should be here tomorrow. Amazon gets here closer to when it's dark out. That's how, you know, we're, when they say, like, by 10 o'clock p.m., I can usually be the 10 o'clock p.m. house they're going to. So, other than that, tomorrow I'll be throwing, or tomorrow or Tuesday I'll be throwing that in. I'm going to close this out now.